Hey guys, welcome back to Choose Your Own Path. Last day of holidays. What are you gonna do? So, still working on the dog. That's okay. But today we're gonna do something different. I've had a couple of these old saws. Got a whack of them down there somewhere. My brother, oldest brother, gave them to me. Lived out in the bush. Collected them, I guess. So I think I'm gonna do something with it. Let's check this out. I got this old rusted saw here. And I mean, it's done, it's old, it's ancient. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a Christmas tree kind of a design. So first thing we gotta do is take off the, uh, the bolts parts, right? Now we have a crack here. So when I take this off, we're gonna have to glue that. So let me get that set up and show you. All right. So when we took off the piece, like this is an old, old saw. It's probably a good 30 years old. Um, you notice that it wasn't on there very well. So all we need to do with this is just kind of clean it up. It's not even really overly done, but it is broken. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just add some wood glue. We got our Gorilla Glue. And what we're gonna do is just we're gonna scoop some of it in there. First step is just to get get this glued properly. Get the thing. Kind of squeeze it together to get all the excess out. Don't worry about the inside. They'll be easily fixed. We're just gonna put this back together. That piece there. Obviously, it's old, it's missing, that's okay. It's not gonna be the end of the world for what it's gonna do. And then we'll just stick it on back to where it was. We don't wanna lose the gap in there. So, we have to just kind of be careful. It doesn't stick too hard now. Maybe I shouldn't have done it that way, but that's okay because we don't want this piece to stick to that piece because it's got a gap its way through. Yeah, I did that wrong, sorry guys. We just want to get a good chunk of glue on the corner here and here. If we have to, we could just sort of separate that with a saw. So we'll just take our clamp So like I said, we don't want that slit to be glued. I made a mistake of putting glue in there, but that's okay. We could, you know, get in there kind of thing. We just want to make sure that this stays back together. So we're going to let that dry and then we'll come back to you. All right, so next thing we're going to do is we're just going to sand away um, the rust. So just make sure you got some sort of ventilator it's always good to have. I'm just using normal 80 grit sandpaper. All right guys, so <clears throat> what we're looking to do is to get like a good chunk of the rust off. You'll never get it to not rust, especially out here in Canada where it gets cold, moisture and everything. So that's pretty much what I'm looking for. It's just get the top harder stuff off, you can see. So I'm gonna wipe it down and then we're gonna go over to the bench and we're gonna draw it out our grinder with our cutting disc and we're just gonna cut the slots out all the way to the tip okay so we're gonna get that set up and check it out
All right, guys. So after about a couple hours, uh, it's dry. It fits in well to the saw. So now we're going to take our um, homemade sander that we, we made, flap sander. This one's getting a little bit worn out, but it's good. And we're just, this, what's really good about this one that I made was you can get into those round areas. Let me show you. you got that all done all you have to do is get yourself a piece of sandpaper and get into the small areas that the flap sander didn't get to and kind of round them off like that all right so we're gonna finish this up and then we're gonna stain it so we'll be right back so we got it all sand up so what I want to do next is I want to give it a torch before I put the stain on I should have said that I just like that burnt look pulls out all the grain on this old wood sometimes you just have to give it a little bit more time to do it um, we did put some glue in there so hopefully that doesn't you know kind of come apart shouldn't but we're just going to give it a good torsion to see what it looks like Ooh, we got the fan over there it's kind of hot out here guys today so Put the fan on not doing any carving with the big uh the dog yet um well at least not today i always have to take a couple days off after i touch a chainsaw just because of the soreness and we don't want to be sore gotta go back to work monday suck ass on that one all right so here we're just going to Add the torch to it, as we did, as we're watching it go. This is old wood, so it smells old. You can see where the flames come out. That's probably the glue. The glue's burning, which is fine. So, you can see it's coming out. It brings out a lot of the the lines of the old wood and it also shows you if you miss sanded if you didn't sand properly I mean it's up to you some people over overkill on sanding I think it looks good when you really sand it well um, though you know, I'm not gonna criticize you if you don't sand it as well as it should be that's on you man that is hot let's get a yeah, at least we could hold it somewhat for some reason I took the thumbs off of these gloves. I can't remember why, but I did. All right, so. Just gonna add the last bits here and there. And when this is done, let it sit for a couple minutes, either outside or something. Just let it cool down because you don't want to put your stain on on this stuff when it's super hot like there's burns and all that sometimes I even take I'll take a, a wet rag I'll take a wet rag and I'll uh, just wipe it down then let it dry outside um, it's just my my preference of doing things but yeah this wood gets hot everything well you're burning it right so why wouldn't it get hot so one more side here now this going on a wall um, you won't see both sides, so, you know, you really want to pick the side that you want to go on. But, I mean, you know, don't do things half-ass. Do it all or don't do it at all, right? Just take a look at where you miss it. Now, when you pull back on your torch like this, where the tip will touch it, that gives it the more heat. You can see the intense heat, so if you get too close, it really, it's okay. But, 
you get really good intense heat, I find, if you do this. I don't know, maybe it's just my way of doing it. Okay, and then one more flip. See that? Put it down today. Once you have that, again, once you have that done, like I said, I'll just take a little bit of water, like a, um, just a damp shop rag, and you got paper cloths in here, and uh, just sort of wipe it down, so if there's any, like, when you're burning stuff, you don't notice, but things start to get uh, hot, and they'll burn, right? Okay? Uh, not brain surgery on that one, but they'll burn and make it stay lit for a while. And if you're not noticing it, then the next thing you know it, your project's burnt. So, adding a little bit of water to your project, it doesn't hurt it. Just means you have to let it sit and dry. And if you're out here, it's hot enough to, you know, not really as hot as the states. You can see the steam coming off it. That's how hot it is. See, that means there's still some blamage going on in there or some sort of heat just compacts in there right so all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this outside till it dries it won't be too long or sit in front of the fan and then we'll come back to steam guys so it's dry so we are gonna add our stain and of course you know i said it before we use the cherry stain now it's gonna make it dark but it's not I don't know, it might make it cherry-ish kind of color, but I think more just dark because of the fact that we burnt it, right? But I think it's gonna turn out good now. Make sure you got a good glove on when doing this. You could wear a ventilator if you're inside. I'm outside, a respirator, whatever you wanna call it. Just wear something to protect yourself. Uh, me being outside, I have the fan on. Everything gets, gets kind of blown the other way. That's what I want. So you want to get her nice and goopy. Get it, get it stained, guys. Don't, don't be shy. Getting all the corners, all the cracks. You may want to put two or three coats to it. That's on you to have it soaking in. Uh, dry time, you know, maybe half an hour if it's really nice out. You could throw it out in the sun. That's what we're gonna do afterwards. We're gonna just throw it out in the sun and. Uh, and then we're gonna hook it up to our saw that we made. Like I didn't show you the finish of it because I wanted to wait till the end for that. Show you what I did, it's sitting right there. All right. So yeah, the doing the saw is basically get a pattern. Get that pattern, whatever you wanna draw, use it on your head, get it on the internet, do whatever you want, okay? And then basically just draw it out. Always draw it out. I always draw it out on your saw. And then take your time when you're cutting because i'll tell you one thing using a grinder if that slips you see that i wear an apron i wear a respirator because you don't want to breathe that shit in and you really don't want to get nicked by any of those sparks because they hurt and then clean up i have a magnet a big magnet that i always go around in my shop i always clean up i don't know why even when i'm finished if i'm still doing a project I'm always constantly cleaning it up, cleaning it up. And you know what? That's important. If you keep a clean shop, not only does your customers get to see that when they come, um, it just gives you a sense of pride of knowing that, you know, you're just not a sloppy pig. You just don't have time. You always have time. You should have time. All right? Not saying you're a sloppy pig, but I can be. <laughs> All right. So once that's on, what it is, we're just, you can see how dark that got. We're just gonna hang it to dry. That's all we're doing. We're just gonna sit it, but we have a fan on. We'll let it sit for a couple minutes, not long. Just enough to, you need know, to clean off my brush here. Keep all my, keep all my stain together. Like, I do use other stains. Don't, go, don't get me wrong, guys. I do use other stains of stuff when I'm doing projects. But for some reason, this, cherry stain is my favorite i just like the darkness it, it takes out of it i guess i don't know maybe that's just me um it's just cool i like it so 
All right, so then what we're gonna do is take a little shop towel. We should put two gloves on. Really don't, really don't like touching stain or epoxy without gloves on because it could really, really get into your skin. Not good for you. All right, so we're just gonna take it and we're just gonna wipe, right, wipe off all the excess out. You can see it's not much. It's, it's, it's on there, but it's not much. Get into all those little cracks. Everything you can to handle. You can see, like I told you, our saw was broken. It was a very old saw. So this basically just has to be pushed back together. Once the saw's on, push back together, put a little bit of glue, clamp it. Even then, it's going to be on this side. You won't see that if it's against the wall, but it does stick out a bit more than we want. So that could cause an issue. And we're going to fix that. All right. So once you got all the stain off, let's let it dry and then see what it looks like with the saw on it. All right. So we're going to hook it up like that, just on a simple hook. We'll leave it here probably for about I don't know, half hour, maybe even less. We're going to go stick it outside in the sun where it could really heat up and uh, dry properly. Because it's not an item we're going to be using, so we're not really worried about, you know, say it was, even if we put epoxy on it right away if we wanted to, it's not going to be an issue. It's just going to sit there on the wall, right? So it's part of the art. All right, so let's let that dry. All right, guys, so here we go. We got our saw cut up, our Christmas tree, or just a tree. These are gonna be like rocks kind of thing here. Uh, sort of a rocky kind of a ledge. So it was simple. That's an old saw, man. This is probably like late 30s, 40s or something like that saw. And it was pretty much in bad shape. That's gonna go on the wall like that. That's how it is. What you can do because of the distance here is if you're gonna make these things to sell, pick your best side. So this would be my best side here because like I showed you guys the, that crack or that crack there. So you pick your best side and then just add a piece of, I don't know, like, a, you know, you get a piece of wood or something like that. Well, and you just kind of add it there, drill a hole on the top, add a piece of wood, the same height as this, so that when it goes on the wall, you know, it won't flop. Well, it won't flop anyway. And you know what? I kept the saw blades on this one you can see just to show that it was a saw and actually this sucker would still cut <laughs> no it would well maybe it would because the, the teeth are still there but anyway that's what i made i didn't do anything fancy here could have carved in some faces or something i don't know could have maybe tree lines up what i think i'm gonna do is i'm gonna paint this guy i'm gonna give it some green and stuff like that. i'm gonna bring it to the airbrush and see what happens I uh, don't know if it'll stick too well, and then just spray it down with some clear coat after. So let me know what you think. I'll post the final picture sometime later on um, with it, and uh, let me know what you think. So like, subscribe, and share. If I can do it, you can do it. Choose your own path. Uh, tools use grinder, um, just sandpaper, homemade sander kind of thing I made to show you on the Fordham. Um, some stain my old-fashioned stain so you know what that's just what i did so uh tip jar at the bottom if you guys want to help out the channel it only goes as far as i can get it to go um anything helps like anything from a dollar to a million whatever you want to give me i'm good with it we'll make more stuff all right guys choose your path see you all later. right guys so we got it all painted up airbrushed and everything and that's what I came up with. You can see some shadows in there kind of thing. Make it look like the trees have some depth to it and all that. So there it is. That's the hand saw uh, art. I just tried painting. I saw it somewhere on Pinterest or something. I don't know. I can't remember who. Either way, I thought it was pretty cool. Got a couple more saws that I want to do like that. Maybe something different on it. I don't know. Give me an idea. There it is. Thanks for watching. Uh, choose your path.